Hi everyone! Welcome to Patty Puckett Pouring Art. Today I'm going to be putting an isolation coat from Golden on one of my paintings. I put it on with a sponge, but thanks to Cause Creations, Kathleen, um, that's why I started using this. She, she recommended it, but um, I usually like putting on my varnish with a sponge, not a brush. So I've already done a couple paintings and I'm using this little sponge. Um, I just don't like brush marks and no matter what brush I've used, it seems to leave marks. So let me show you how I'm doing the isolation coats the same way, basically. I put in a little squirt bottle and then I just run it. This is a pretty big painting, so I'm going to put some like that, a little bit on the sponge. You have to push sort of hard on it. I mean, I go go through it, uh, well, as you can see, a couple times here. So I do my top first, and I look at it, and then I just do it again. I push a little bit firmer on the second time. Just want to make sure there's no empty spots left. Okay. So... That looks pretty good. I mean, I still can see lines, but not as bad as the brush. So was, you can work it as long as it as long as it doesn't start drying, and it does start to dry fast. So you could take a look and make sure, even if you miss a little spot, which I didn't on this one, um, you can do a second coat, and it'll cover it right up. So same with the sides, I just run the sponge down the sides. And then I'll be doing a coat of Liquitex glass medium on this one, or glass varnish on this one. And I'll also be using the sponge. I also like using the big sponge too, so this is the first time I've tried the little one, but I might try this one putting on, I think probably any sponge would work. Um, some people put it on with a roller, but I like having that, being able to really get the spots I need and not leave any extra on here. So that's all there is to it. So you wanna wait 24 hours before you put a second coat, if you're going to, or before you put a varnish. So you could put, they recommend two coats of isolation coat, but if you get a nice coat on there, um, one coat would probably do. And then go ahead and put your varnish on over that, but you have to wait 24 hours. So this is a little convenient to keep it in here. Next time you want to use it, it's ready to go. I also have my polycrylic in there. Sometimes I varnish with that on certain paintings. But um, golden isolation coat. Very good. Anyway, a little short video. I might be back uh, when I varnish. Put this on the video too. Okay, I'm back. Um, this piece already has the isolation coat on it. And that is the golden. Um, I applied it with the sponge. I keep the sponge with for the varnishes and the isolation coat and a Ziploc bag. So I applied two coats of the isolation and then I let that dry overnight and now I'm going to be using Liquitex gloss varnish and I put it on with like a car wash sponge. It's pretty um, level and flat. So what I like to do is I just squirt some on there like that, grab the sponge. And sort of apply some pressure. And get the sides. And you probably can't see all this. <clears throat> but I get all the sides. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put probably three or four coats of this on. When you do it like this, the coats are so thin. Um, 
and go ahead and go back over it. Make sure you look at it from the side, make sure you got everything. If you miss something, it's no big deal. You'll catch it on the next coat. But very thin layers. I've never had an issue with anything cracking, um, anything like that. It always turns out really good. Now, I put this coat on this way. So the next time I put the coat on, it will be vertical, like this. So just go ahead and don't overwork it. Um, do it quickly. Don't do it and then wait a couple minutes and go over it because that can mess it up. And like I said, if you realize a couple minutes later that you missed a spot, don't worry about it. You'll get it on the next coat. So three to four coats. Um, I know a lot of people do it with a brush and I do use the bright tone and I do put this on with the brush, but um, I don't know, four coats, it looks really good. If you want it shinier, you can go ahead and put five or six coats on it, or you can go ahead and use the bright tone over this gloss finish. Um, so it'll have you know the isolation, then the gloss, and then the bright, cone, bright tone. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. Um, I wait at least, I don't know, thin coats, probably a good couple, two hours. And then I'll put another coat on and wait another two hours. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. This is a 18 by 24. And anyway, thanks so much for watching. I have already put two coats of the Liquitex gloss varnish on it. But after watching Karen at Waterfall Acrylics, and also I know Jen Neal uses this, and I've had it, and I do use it on um, my Shelly Technique sometimes. Super expensive. I thought I would try going over it with a coat of this, and then I'm gonna be doing some blingy stuff to this. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to be using just a regular brush. Now, if you watch my prior videos, you know I like to use a sponge. But for this one, since you said there's no brush strokes, I'm going to go ahead and I have it put in this little bottle here. I'm going to go ahead and see what happens if I do it like this. So let's go. I'm not sure how fast I need to work or if I need to I'm going to open this just in case I need it. So, feels very smooth. Of course, I'm doing it on top of gloss already. It's supposed to be self leveling. Karen was going crazy over it, so I'm like, I already have that. But I haven't used it as a top coat, which is actually. When you look this up, usually they use it as finishing a guitar, giving a guitar that shine. So, if I don't have enough, or... All right, let me take a look and make sure that I didn't miss anything. Looks good. I could put two coats on if I need to. I'm just, okay, it looks like, by the way, in here, you'll, there's some glitter, too. Um, you can really see it. I know you can't, probably. But I do see some brush strokes right now. I do see some air bubbles over here. Very shiny. There's, it looks like it's leveling out pretty good. I do, I'm going to turn it around to make sure I, if I see it. Yeah, I see something over here. You just gotta really look at it from all angles because you can't see it sometimes just by tilting it. Another spot here. Okay. Okay, I'm back the next day and I love how it turned out. Um, I don't know if you can see the shine. But it's resin-like, but you know, nothing beats resin, but 
I would think this would be the next best thing. Um, I did this one also, and you could, so for a difference, under this I did have a couple coats of the Liquitex gloss. So if you see some lines in here, it's because of the Liquitex gloss, not because of, um, same with this, not because of, because um, both of these were done over the Liquitex gloss. Now to see the difference, this is, has three coats of Liquitex gloss varnish, and this one is the bright tone. So you can see the difference right there with the light. See the difference in the shine. This one is more like a glass finish and it's very hard where this one is shiny but not as reflective as this one. That's a good comparison right there. There you go. And this one. So like I said, um, these have Liquitex under them. I need to do a few with just the bright tone. But for this video, it's not about this, but I thought I'd throw that in. Um, I'll be back. I'm going to be uh, doing some bling over this, but I wanted to get the shine down first because I won't be going anywhere over here. So I'll be back. <laughs> 